silence it during the ceremony. Thank you for your attention and congratulations. morning. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. We are also grateful to have the opportunity to celebrate the achievement of our scholars who graduate today. On their behalf, let us express gratitude for the support of their families and friends, and for the faculty and staff who have guided them in their pursuit of knowledge. Whatever our own traditions, let us reflect as we proceed to the convocation ceremony on the many years of effort sacrifice and success that have brought us to this time of celebration. In Conculium Universitates Torontonenses Vocati Somus. Graduands, please remain standing. All guests, please be seated. Insignissime cancellaria, presento tibi hosque scolaris, ut admitantur ad gradus varios, testorque eos coad omnia quae statuta requirunt aptos ad idoneos esse. Ad perfectum huies provinciae, huies qua magnae patriae, ad perfectum omnium nationum, omnibus in taris conutarum, Ago ex acatoritate mihi etoti, universitate commissar, admito vos egredos varios, quarum ura vubisto, epeto coqua ut omnia, contrictiatas muneraqua adilos radus pertinent. Please be seated.
my name is Merrick Gertler, and it is my great privilege to serve the University of Toronto as its 16th president. Today, I have the additional privilege of assisting our chancellor, Dr. Rose Patton, in conducting this convocation. The university is an institution with deep historical roots and many enduring traditions. Among those is our use of the language of the medieval university in today's wonderful celebration. For those in attendance who, like me, are less than fluent in Latin, a translation may be helpful. For my part, I said, most distinguished chancellor, I present to you these scholars that they may be admitted to the various degrees. And I bear witness that as far as all things which the statutes require, they are fit and suitable. Now, much more significantly from the standpoint of the graduating class, the chancellor then replied, to the benefit of this province, this great country, and to the worldwide community of nations, I, by the authority vested in me and in the whole university, admit you to your various degrees, grant to you the rights, and ask of you the responsibilities of doing all those things which pertain to those degrees. And so as my first order of business, I am delighted to salute you, the graduating classes of 2022 from the Faculty of Law, the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy, and the School of Graduate Studies. That's it, you're done. Warmest congratulations. I would also like to bid a warm welcome to everyone who has joined us here in historic Convocation Hall. It is so wonderful to be able to celebrate the first in-person Convocation season since November of 2019. Well, graduates, today the University of Toronto is formally recognizing your hard work, your accomplishments, your perseverance, and this milestone. Speaking of perseverance, you have successfully completed your program in extraordinary and challenging times. And today's celebration is all the more meaningful for it. Each of you as a member of the graduating class is joining an extraordinary family of University of Toronto alumni. They number over 600,000 in more than 190 countries around the world. They are the university's living legacy and our greatest ambassadors. Today, we are also recognizing the Honorable Gloria Epstein, who across an esteemed 45-year career has had a transformative impact on Canadian law and society, not least through her groundbreaking decision on equal treatment of same-sex partnerships. You will hear much more about our honorary graduate in a moment. But for now, let me simply observe that U of T alumni serve in leadership roles in every corner of the globe and in every walk of life. They are prime ministers, justices, scholars, authors, community and business leaders, scientists and professionals of every description. Their endeavors have shaped the world we live in and the way we understand that world. We have no doubt that the University of Toronto's high international standing can be attributed to generations of dedicated and very talented faculty and staff members but we also understand that this reputation has been built by our alumni, a group that now includes each and every one of you. So to the graduating class, let me say thank you. Thank you for your many contributions to the university while you were a student. And thank you for what you will do as members of Canada's largest and I believe most distinguished alumni community. One more word of thanks is in order. I'm sure all graduates share a sense of gratitude to the friends and family members who've helped bring them to this special day. So I would ask you to join me and the platform party in thanking them with a vigorous round of applause. Let me continue with a request. One of the distinguishing features of our convocation is that graduates come forward individually to be recognized. You'll be standing about here on the red carpet. Once you've had your moment in the spotlight, you will then follow the red carpet around to the ramp and exit out that door. 
uh, and go around the hall. At that point, you will turn left and quietly re-enter the hall as your peers continue to be recognized. Now, in this light, I would encourage you to think of the very last person who's going to be on stage here this morning. I believe it will be Katerina Zek. Katerina, are you here? Can you stand up, please? So everyone, remember Katerina and return to your seat. <laughs> Finally, uh, in light of ongoing health and safety concerns regarding the pandemic, we remind all individuals present that the University of Toronto mask requirement is still in effect until the end of June, and that you must wear a properly fitting mask throughout today's ceremony. Similarly, uh, we will forego the traditional handshake on stage, but we will promise a vigorous round of applause as you pass by or a friendly wave. Uh, so we thank you for your understanding and your assistance. And once more, my warmest congratulations. It's now my privilege to invite Professor Yuta Brunet, Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Toronto, to present our honorary graduate. From humble beginnings to a distinguished legal career during which she impacted the lives of many Canadians, the Honorable Gloria J. Epstein has led an extraordinary life, surmounting challenges and trailblazing a path for women in the legal profession. Widely admired for her steadfast commitment to equity, justice and inclusion, compassion, community devotion and public service, Justice Epstein is an inspirational change maker. As a member of the judiciary, Justice Epstein earned the respect of the legal profession for her careful and diligent approach to judging. Equally, she earned the respect of the litigants who appeared in her court for her compassion and attention to the human dimensions of every case she decided. She displayed much more than a thorough knowledge of the law. She strove to understand the people who appeared before her and to reach just and practical resolutions to their problems. Her most notable judgment is the famous marriage equality case of M versus H, which is recognized as a groundbreaking decision on equal treatment of same-sex partnerships. The decision, a critically important moment in the history of LGBTQ2S plus people's struggle for equality, ultimately paved the way for full marriage equality under Canadian law. Beyond her accomplishments as a lawyer and judge, Justice Epstein has demonstrated remarkable dedication to public service and her community. She headed the independent civilian review into missing person investigations that led recently, that recently issued recommendations for the establishment of an improved relationship between the Toronto Police Service and LGBTQ2S plus communities. She also served as a long-standing member of the Board of Directors of Pathways to Education and has been de a devoted and generous alumna to the Faculty of Law, including serving as president of the Law Alumni Association Council, Justice in Residence, alumni mentor, and board member of the building campaign that culminated in the construction of the Jackman Law Building. Justice Epstein's achievements and contributions have been recognized with the UFT Arbor Award in 2007 and the YWCA Women of Distinction Award in 2013. She received an honorary degree from the Law Society of Ontario in 2019. For her excellence in the profession through her transformative impact on law and her outstanding service to the university as a mentor and volunteer, Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Governing Council, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Law Honoris Causa upon Justice Gloria J. Epstein. On behalf of the University of Toronto and by virtue of the authority vested in me, I have the great honor and pleasure of conferring on you, as I do now, the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa.
I guess that's it. <laughs> Chancellor Patton, President Gertler, Dean Bernay, Professor Lowen, members of the platform party, family and friends of the graduating classes, my long-suffering family and friends, and most important, the two classes of 2022 we are here to celebrate. Graduates, after today, each of you, each of you in different ways, at different speeds, and in different directions, will embark on the next phase of your professional life. As you do, I suggest you consider the importance of perspective, of seeing the bigger picture, ultimately of getting to the point where you are able to identify a purpose, a purpose to your career. It may be helpful if I explain what I mean by purpose through the parable known as the three bricklayers. One day, while walking down the street, a man saw three bricklayers. And he asked the same question of each. He said, what are you doing? The first responded gruffly, I'm earning five bucks an hour. Sounding bored, the second said, I'm putting bricks on top of each other. The third paused and then with considerable pride said, I'm helping construct a beautiful edifice. Each bricklayer was doing the same task. However, only the third, only the third was able to see the bigger picture, identify the purpose in what he was doing. Personally, I wish that earlier in my career, I'd thought about the bigger picture. It would have made the path from where you are now all of you are now, young and full of promise to where I am now, old and full of aches and pains, <laughs> much more meaningful. A bit about that path, and you've heard a little bit already, but I'm gonna put my own spin on it. After I obtained my commerce degree, I took the most logical, the most logical next step. I ran a fishing camp on an island in Northern Ontario. What followed was 100-hour work weeks, cooking on the cook's day off, bartending on the bartender's day off, pulling snakes out of water pumps. Okay, one snake out of one water pump. <laughs> but I think you get the picture. It was interesting, but not pretty. My perspective at the time was that I had a job. Yeah, a different kind of job, but I didn't see anything more than that. I didn't even think about how those years would contribute to what I was to become. But I now see that in helping people enjoy their time at the lodge, even when the fish weren't biting, I was developing skills important to the path that lay ahead. After two years running the camp, a bus trip back to Toronto, a job as a cocktail waitress, and finally four years at U of T Law plus Barad, and during which I gave birth to two children, I found myself doing litigation initially in two large law firms. I then started my own firm just as I welcomed my third child into the world for many reasons, many reasons. It gives me great pride that my youngest formed part of today's procession. During the years I practiced law, the clearer picture of my career emerged. Sure, I was earning an income. Sure, I was completing work that needed to be done for my clients. Both were important, but more important, more important was the, that I was helping people put problems behind them. What followed was 25 years on the bench, an amazing part of my life, during which I had the privilege of having a more direct role in playing, in helping people move past their problems. Of course, they didn't all agree with the help I provided, 
But at least in most cases, the turmoil that brought them before the court came to an end. On occasion, I even had the privilege of making a bigger contribution to the edifice, of helping people in a broader way. A good example is the decision in m &H, about which you've already heard. m &H had a welcoming impact on our country as it led to the Halpern decision that legalized same-sex marriages and near equality for all sexes and genders. Every Canadian, every Canadian benefited from these decisions. My additional benefit was that m &H was a significant factor in my being appointed to head the Independent Civilian Review into Missing Person Investigations. The review was prompted in large part by the tragic deaths of members of Toronto's LGBTQ2S plus communities. Concerns were raised about whether the response of the Toronto Police to reports of missing persons was tainted by systemic bias or discrimination against members of these communities, as well as marginalized or vulnerable communities generally. My findings of systemic. Systemic discrimination formed the basis for 151 recommendations designed to promote efficient, effective, bias-free policing for missing person investigations specifically and better police relations for all members of our, community, of our community, particularly those who are marginalized and vulnerable. The review gave me the opportunity to help people I used to judge, but I helped them in a different manner. I worked with them in a different manner. I sat with them, not above them. We worked together with the common goal of addressing their problems, many of which were rooted in discrimination. I learned so very much from the marginalized and vulnerable, the homeless, trans people, those with mental health issues, and the Indigenous, to name a few. I submitted my report in April of 2021, and for the first time, first time since I was 12, I didn't have a job. It was actually, it was actually quite scary. I wondered if it was maybe time to put the slippers on. I mentioned that possibility to the talented lawyer and wonderful human being Terry O'Sullivan. His response, Gloria, I'm sure you don't even own a pair of slippers. Well, he was right. So now I'm a mediator and arbitrator. Once again, I have committed myself to helping people solve their problems. Once again, I am being both challenged and inspired. Clearly, clearly this is what I was meant to be doing during the last 25 years of my career. 25 years. <laughs> I digress from the bricklayer theme with the observation that this special day is taking place during Pride Month. In honor of Pride, I would like to share a particularly important aspect of my personal connection with the LGBTQ2S plus communities. And that is my friendship with Professor Swan, who taught me contracts when I was at U of T Law. Professor Swan, recently awarded the Order of Canada, is a leading thinker, writer, and educator. In addition to being a longtime partner at Air Burles, Professor Swan has taught at six Canadian universities and has written award-winning texts in contract law. She is also actively involved in her community, mainly with the LGBTQ2S plus communities, particularly the trans people. There's good reason for the professor's enthusiastic support for the trans community. When Professor Swan taught me contracts in the mid 70s, her name was John. In 2008, John became Angela. 
With considerable joy, Angela describes her good fortune in finally being able to be the person she always knew she was to be. Angela has taught me much, not only about contract law, but also about the challenges of being transgender. I'm truly honored that Angela is here to help me celebrate this special day. Thank you, Angela. You are probably wondering how I'm ever going to get from this digression, motivated by a desire to acknowledge Pride Month and Angela, back to my main theme, the one linked to the guys with the bricks. Not being able to come up with a clever segue, I'm just going to go straight back to the third bricklayer, the one who saw the bigger picture, the purpose, the purpose in what he was doing. As a lawyer, a judge, a reviewer, and now a mediator and arbitrator, I have earned a living performing tasks related to the law. But the bigger picture. The bigger picture, one that has given me a great sense of fulfillment, is that I have been part of a process that helps people put their problems behind them. I conclude by saying this. Whatever path you choose to pursue, I urge you to stand back from time to time and try to identify your purpose. The way in which your career can be expression not only of what you are doing, but also of who you are. I would like to thank the University of Toronto for bestowing this honor and to all the graduates for the great privilege of letting me share with you this important occasion as you celebrate all you have achieved in getting here and contemplate, and as you contemplate the unpredictable and most certainly interesting and rewarding road ahead. Congratulations to you all. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you the following candidate from the School of Graduate Studies who is being admitted to the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science, Dustin Gumpinger. <laughs> Candidates from the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the degree of Master of Laws. Tan E. Xian Damian. Kritika Kapoor. Ku Li Chia Nicholas. David Walders. Candidates from the Faculty of Law and the Joseph L. Rotman School of Management who are being admitted to the combined degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Business Administration. Bryn Mackenzie Berry. <laughs> Haley Chin. Andre Alexander Barrara Domata. 
Navali Elaine Davy. David El Haddad. Benjamin Isaac Errol Falconer. Danya Leah Firestone. Amanvir Singh Gill. Alexander Caleb Green. Daniel Corman. Zachary Lechner Sung. Akib Mahmood. Sakib Mahmood. Olivia Jade Martin. Kevin Kashaye Miri. Devin Jane Olin. Vivian Jean Poole. Kristen Shelby Taylor Rogavin. Scarlett Sprung. Gabe Brana Sutherland. Martin Aaron Victory. Meijong Xing. Linda Yang. Candidate from the Faculty of Law and the Faculty of Information who is being admitted to the combined degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Information. Huaishin Wang. <laughs> Candidates from the Faculty of Law and the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the combined degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Global Affairs. Austin Brian James Amy. Charles Schrembeck Baker. <laughs> Candidates from the Faculty of Law and the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the combined degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Public Policy. Mackenzie James Claggett. <laughs> Lucas Yeomans. Candidates from the Faculty of Law and the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the combined degree of Juris Doctor and Master of Social Work. Emily Catherine Shepard. <laughs> Alina Oriana Valachi. <laughs> Candidates from the Faculty of Law who are being admitted to the degree of Juris Doctor. Elspeth M. H. Adeheti. Manula Adihati. <laughs> Abraham Ahmed. <laughs> Jamie Jiyoung Ann. <laughs> Rachel Eleanor Cecilia Allen. <laughs> Sung Samson Ann. Ellen Ann. <laughs> Madeline Francis Grant Andrew G. <laughs> Margaret Mary Appleton Arai. <laughs> Safa Bajwa. <laughs> Mayam Isaiah Backen Klein. Joseph Emmanuel Benson.
Jacob Bershadsky. <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth Blaine. <laughs> Melitza Bolyevich. <laughs> Hannah Jean Bourgeois. <laughs> Nicholas Buhite. Charlotte Blakey Butler. Mark Butler. Anson Kai. Hunter Raquel Bassness Carlson. Madeline Elizabeth Carswell. Brandon Allen Cave. <laughs> Natalie Chan. <laughs> Leora Rena Chapman. <laughs> Amy June Chen. <laughs> Ching Yu Lizzie Chen. Vivian Cheng. <laughs> Alexandra Hoi Yin Chung. <laughs> Hannah Paulina Sinel. <laughs> April Nicole Sitter. <laughs> Vanessa Diane Colton. Jessica Lynn Victoria Commanda. Christopher James Hunter Cook. Jamie Michelle Victoria Corbett. Willem Alexander Crispin Frey. Mackenzie Elise Cumberland. Jean-Pierre D'Angelo. Jenna D'Arizio. Charles Adam Davis. Scott Dawson. Kylie Margaret de Chastelain. Audrey Ann Delage. Conlin Donovan Delbar Sachuk. William Henry Dennis. Cassandra Irene Devenyi. Vanchika Davan. Giancarlo Joseph Dicenza. Andrew Haddon Gillespie Easto. Trenton Gerald Yoshio Erickson. Ifra Farah. Sierra Elizabeth Margaret Farr. Maya Chua Fiorante. Lavali Rose Forbes. Joseph Samuel Israel Galinsky. Julia Rachel Gauz. Amir Gureshi. <laughs> 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 
William Giancarlo Gillespie. Asha Janielle Gordon. Anissa Graywall. Barney Frank Griggs. Sean Gruhi. Logan Raymond Hale. Kirsten Hart. Mitchell Wagar Hayes. Caitlin Simone Christina Hellu. Greta Bryn Morris Hoken. Stephen Michael Hope. Yi Jiang Hao. Brian Alexander Sue. Anna Mary Devakos Holchansky. Colin Matthew Lepinen Hunt. Michelle Hui Ching Huang. Rebecca Chiling Huang. Emma Abrakovich. Catherine Loreen Irwin. Keon Jamal. Shying Jia. Dylan Yushko. Leah Taylor Kelly. Madison Marie Kerr. Abdullah Jamshed Khan. Saba Kokar. Shin Dong Kim. Samantha Jennifer Coconis. Sean Joseph Lalman. Hannah Monica Link. Monica Layarda. Anu Lee. Gemma Lewis. Jiayu Lee. Jiuling Lee. Thea. Inshua Lee. Zen Lee. Evan Morrison Lynn. Iris Liu. Trevor Lorber. Kaylee Alexandra Machado. Matthew William Shaw Marriott. Yasmin Masudi. Joseph Mercado. Natalie Marie Miller.
Maggie Caitlin Adara Morris. Florian Nagy. Taskeen Ather Nawab. Dina Nixeresht. Carly Don Nordstrom. Julia Nowicki. Nicole Elizabeth Nowaselski. Annecy Peng. Flint Andrew Patterson. Ian Alexander von Riesel Pell. Jonathan Corbinian Pettit. Tommy Pham. Ainsley Ray Perinoski. Adrian Jean Ralph. Julia Raoup de Sa Pimentel. Austin Wes Ray. Aya Rafat. Jacob Gray Reynolds. Simon William Rodomar. Graham Rotenberg. Alana Safnuk. Jackson Saunders. Dan Schechner. Michael Senpo Nakatsuru Schaefer. Ryan Shaw. Jonathan Shankman. Wendy Shin. Seema Sidhu. Jackson Charles O'Brien Spencer. Sophia Sugumar. Sabrina Indira Devi Sukdeo. Elsie Adele Tellier. Emily Victoria Tessier. Madeline Jane Bliss Thomas. Daniel Tyberg. Aryaman Vaidaswaran. <laughs> Trundra Shaker, Ventka American. Ventka Tamaraman. <laughs> Tina Vulovich. Rivers Wall, sorry. <laughs> Zachary John Wallace. <laughs> Natasha Mara Williams. <laughs> Jay
Julia Jung Mi Wan. Oliver Richard Wookie. Rebecca Jane Xia. Lucy Yao. Harris Khalil Yakin. Garrett Yao. Leanne Moon Young. Shui Zheng. Sophie Yunju Zhao. Candidates from the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the degree of Master of Global Affairs. Sarah Abdulrahman Jabbar. Yasmin Abed. Adam Abur. Tio Luwani Aderi Bigby. Renee, Renee Eileen Apadure. Afra Arif. Yuna Ban. Imran Jamal Bayumi. Carolina Kanapari. Larissa Emily Chan. Retinder Kaur Chowdhury. Naushin Mezabin Chowdhury. Frederick Cassette. Stuart William Cohen. Julia Da Silva. Sarah Deby. Benjamin Duran. Eric Daniel Dugas. Michaela Christine Gill. Megan Gowdy. Salwa Hakem. Amandeep Singh Hanspal. Ella Francis Grace Hartso. Madeline Marie Heinemann. Ziyi Hu. Kelly Ann Hui. Alexandria Johnston. Harjot Carr. Pohan Thar Chaja. Hillary Catherine Lawson. Travis Elijah Joshua LeBlanc. Alvin LeCompte. Daija Lee.
Samara Esther Lewis. Angela Yilin Liu. Hannah Lowith. Catherine Grace Thiel McKenzie. Husna Madhi. Anton Benedict Meyer. Alexander Roberto Mayo. Andodosi Mlagna. Oksana Nikitenko. Connor Donald Stewart Oak. Tabitha Oluwapin Oni. Kiyang Jun Park. Kristen Leanne Perrin. Divya Rajagopal Sarkar. Simon Rechiko Moisan. Jonathan Camillo Rincon Lopez. Eva Bergita Ringstad. Joanna Virginia Roedis. Joseph David Rossi. <laughs> Melanie Sarmiento Bravo. <laughs> Lena Sarigi. <laughs> Rebecca Seward Langdon. Yang Tian Chiao Shi. Brianna Vanessa Severn Frinton. Paige Hannah Smith. Dorothea Sakely. Christian John Tremontin. Samantha Diana Tristan. Shale Yatrick Vin. Candidates from the School of Graduate Studies who are being admitted to the degree of Master of Public Policy. Sophia Sholay Akhavan Zanjani. <laughs> Jude Almud. <laughs> Faraya Amin. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Annabel. <laughs> Jaden Ao. Romulo Christian Avendano. <laughs> Alicia Ayaz. <laughs> Cheriza Aziz. <laughs> Armin Bachman. <laughs> Melanie Barona. Maria Banak. Patrick Berting.
Alyssa Bishop. Amber Nina Chialing Chen. Evelyn Chung. Sarah Catherine Cola. Alexandria De Sousa. Olivia Dobrin. Sabina Ficocello. Michelle Chung Yi Fung. Matthew Frola. Justin Gander. Riley Garno. Sabrina Claudine Tan Gilmore. Eric Weiji Gu. Chloe Hines. Sabrina C. Hyde. Nancy G. Sawyer Younger. Rubina Carell. Angela Natasha LaPonce. Sean La Prairie. Marcus Rolando Lamboy. Joshua Morando. Rachel May. Jennifer Ann Jesse McElwain. Sean McGowan. Erin Jane Mirdell. Jillian Moncton. Zachary Daniel Morris. Emily Neeson. <laughs> Kelly Nin. <laughs> Matthew Menciok O. <laughs> Jessica Shengja Pan. <laughs> Priyanka Patel. Ilya Petukov. <laughs> Pamela Anna Petrusiak. <laughs> Madison Ropek. <laughs> Ruth Georgia Rosale. <laughs> Camilo Sanchez Galindo. <laughs> So much. <laughs> Molly Simpson. <laughs> Alicia Wai Ha Suen. John William Tatsio. Akshita Verma. Pamoda Weijo Kong. Claire Emily Hall Wilmer. 
Samantha Summer Wilson. Chan Nan Shu. Tian Wei Shu. Mayreen Yusuf. Katarina Zek. On behalf of the University of Toronto, and by virtue of the authority vested in me, I hereby admit all those candidates, not here present, to their degrees in absentia. As we conclude convocation, I wish to thank all of you for your participation and your patience. To the families and friends and to those in the procession, let me say thank you. You've made this a more memorable event for each member of the graduating class. I'd like to thank Chancellor Rose Patton for presiding over today's ceremony. I wish to thank as well the many other colleagues and friends of the university who participated in this convocation, whose names you will find in the program. To our honorary graduate, Dr. Gloria Epstein, let me say that you've inspired us with your lifetime career and accomplishments, and this morning you have inspired us again with your wonderful words. So thank you and congratulations. So this year, the University of Toronto is very proud to introduce a new an important ceremonial element at Convocation. As you will have noticed, the Chancellor's procession was led this morning by an eagle feather bearer. The eagle feather remained on the stage during the ceremony beside the mace. This eagle feather was gifted to the office of the President by elders at the 2017 entrustment ceremony for the report of U of T's Truth and Reconciliation Steering Committee. To many indigenous cultures, the eagle feather is sacred because it flies closest to the creator, delivering our thoughts and messages. The eagle and its feathers often symbolize respect, honor, strength, courage, and wisdom. As such, I think you will agree that the eagle feather is an appropriate and meaningful addition to our convocation ceremonies. I would now like to invite the chancellor to bring today's ceremony to a close. As I bring this convocation ceremony to a close on this your special day, I hope we will see you often in the years to come, and I invite you to stay connected. We will be very interested in your journey, and we know that you will make an impact for the better in whatever path you choose. Conculium dimissum est.